Six, okay, is that okay? So two from the first midterm, two from the second midterm, you already created. And now you can create, uh, you can create another two uh, for the final exam. So totally you have six, okay? Um, of course, I mean, uh, it will be comprehensive. Uh, that's right, six uh, front and back, yes. Uh, it will be comprehensive, but we will pay uh, much more attention to um, to uh, the remaining chapters, okay? But uh, having said that, I have to tell you that I also, I can also ask you uh, anything from chapter two, three, four, uh, six, seven, whatever, right? Um, so be careful. Um, you know, please review everything. And of course, uh, next Monday, we will have a review um, session as well. Uh, and you can have a chance to ask more questions um, on the material, okay? So let, uh, uh, let's start the new lecture today. That's the general purpose timers, okay? So if you follow the uh, embedded uh, um, engineering path, uh, probably uh, you have to know the timer of, for sure. And it's a very interesting uh, device and also um, very interest, uh, very important as well. Uh, very interesting and very important. So up to this point, we just mainly talk about uh, the processor, right? The processor assembly language, but this is the first time that you, uh, you are dealing with a very uh, peripheral um, uh, device. So, uh, and uh, this is a, uh, Complicated, interesting, and, and important. Okay, so let's see why it's important. So let's move to uh, the second uh, slide over here. Um, okay, so uh, maybe I should I should move to the first slide and then I come back to the second slide later. Okay, so uh, this is one of the uh, application that probably you will uh, you will do in the future, right? Uh, so probably. Um, Maybe you can use your board, uh, um, your board, for example, the, the, the one similar to what you use in the lab, for example, right? You can program the board so that you can generate uh, uh, forces like that. Do you know how to do it now? Let me ask you, do you know how to do it? <laughs> for example, if you want to uh, generate uh, uh, a pulse, um, the magnitude is three volt, right? And then the uh, the pulse width is ten microsecond, okay. And the frequency for the pulse is uh, the period for the pulse is a point six five five second. And then you you want to do it um, regularly, period, uh, periodic, uh, periodically. So um, can you do that? Not enough, right? So this lecture will teach you how to do that. And of course, I mean the. Um, and nowadays, the timer is uh, very easy to find. It's actually when you, you buy a, um, a, a microcontroller, usually uh, it already has um, uh, several built-in timers for you to use, right? So, um, so you can generate the, the pulses uh, with the precise post width like this, okay? With a very precise post width. And you, it's, it's very important, for example, because you want to uh, um, uh, you want to uh, to connect the poles here to an LED, for example, and you will see that uh, uh, the LED will flag uh, every um, point six five five second, for example. So it's very useful, right? And um, that's the uh, at your level. Um, but later on, maybe uh, if you are more into this area. Uh, for example, if you really want to um, uh, create a, a uh, if you want your system to to uh, to do multitask at the same time, okay, <laughs> at the same time, then you have to use a timer as well, right? You have to use the timer so that you can say, okay, for task number one, uh, I will uh, will let you run in uh, one microsecond, and the next uh, uh, microsecond I will switch to task uh, number two. And then the next uh, the microsecond, I will switch to task number three, right? To create uh, an illusion of uh, execute uh, of executing three tasks, one, two, three, at the same time, right? So, for example, I mean, it, uh, um, the operating system, for example, uh, 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 
uh, does that all the time because uh, as you can see if, um, when you um, uh, when you bring up a, a word uh, uh, processing uh, application for example Microsoft Word right so you can uh, you can do uh, things at the same time for example you can type and then you can print the document at the same time too right so uh, Oh, actually, uh, there's a hard question. Uh, so, timer is simply how long an execution runs for each task. That's one question. Another is this similar of uh, pipelining. Oh, uh, the, the concept of pipelining is a little bit different, uh, Mark. Right. So, uh, when you talk, uh, I am uh, teaching um, another uh, graduate level class for EE two seventy one. So, in that class, uh, I also mentioned about uh, pipelining technique. So, in case if you uh, you want to uh, to study um, your master here, you you can take that class too, right? But the concept of pipelining. Oh, actually, we we talk about the pipelining, right? At the beginning of uh, of our course, it's not much, but we also mention about it, right? Um, for example, uh, for ARM processor, usually um, we have three uh, pipelining uh, stages, right? Uh, um, fetch, uh, um, instruction fetch, and then decoding, and then execution, right? So, but the concept is different. So now, over here, we just learn about the clock, that's all, a timer, right? And the timer, the application is a very rich application. You can use that one to, uh, uh, whenever you want, right? So in this case, for example, I, I just give you some application. So for, uh, for example, in this case, you want to generate uh, uh, pulses of 10 microsecond, 10 microsecond uh, um, width, right? So how to do that? Uh, of course, you have to use the, the timer to 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 um, to uh, create these precise uh, pulses, right? So we, we will talk about how to do that uh, um, uh, uh, by by uh, Wednesday. So don't worry too much. So one of the um, application is uh, uh, you can use is in this case is ultrasonic distance sensing okay so this is a very cheap you can buy this one i don't know how much uh, does it cost but you can search on internet and, and search for this device right and the use for this device is very simple of course the application is used to measure the distance uh, uh, to uh, to uh, for, for use in open um, in opening uh, the door automatically and close the door automatically right so do you, I mean, you go to the super, uh, supermarket, right? So whenever you walk in the supermarket, you, the door will uh, open uh, automatically, right? So that door has a sensor. Um, so usually it's a different sensor. In, in, in this case, we use an ultra uh, sonic uh, sensor, but well, probably at the, at the supermarket, they use a different kind of sensor. I, I think it's a light sensor, but the idea is similar, right? So. The sensor here actually generate um, uh, generate the uh, um, the signal, the sound signal. Okay, and when you walk in, it will detect the distance from the door to you, right? So if you are within some distance, uh, it will tell the door to open, right? So that's the idea, right? So um, um, so the question is. How does it work? How does this sensor measure the distance from the door to you? So it's, uh, it turns out it's very, very simple, you know? It's only, it has only four pins over here. I think that you can buy it today and then you can test it out, right? Of course, the, the, the first pin here is a power supply pin, right? So uh, the power supply pin, I think is uh, you should hook to um hook to either five three volt or five volt over here right um and then you have a ground just a just ground right and then of course power supplies um uh, we don't talk about that uh, in this line because it's so simple i mean it's just a power supply right but the two pins that are important for us is uh the trigger pin and the uh, echo uh, echo pin okay so uh, when the sensor one uh, 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 broadcast a uh, ultras, uh, ultrasound. If um, if you want to, the the sensor to generate the ultra ultrasound, then you will send 
10 microsecond pulses to this pin, okay? To this pin, okay? Send out through here, okay? And this one will hit you, right? Will hit, hit uh, uh, any object that it, it wants uh, to measure the distance. And then uh, there will be a uh, um, uh, uh, reflect, uh, the, the signal reflect back to you, right? And it will get to here, right? And when it gets to here, the sensor will generate uh, another pulse called, uh, this is a uh, eco pulse, uh, pulse over here, okay? And then uh, your, your uh, microcontroller, microcontroller is actually right here, okay? So connect to the sensor over here. So my, your microcontroller has a timer in there. So you, again, you can use the timer to measure the width of the receiving pulse from the sensor, okay? So uh, depend on the pulse width of the receiving uh, pulse over here, you will figure out the distance from the door to the object, okay? So if the pulse, uh, if the pulse width here is, uh, is um, wide, the distance is large. If the pulse width is short, the distance is short. Uh, it's just uh, simple, right? So um, you have to use two timers over here, right? Two timers. Uh, one and the, and the time, uh, your microcontroller definitely will have two timers. So don't worry. So you can use the first timer to generate, okay? To generate the pulse, okay? The second timer is to receive the pulse and measure the pulse width, right? And then if you know the pulse width, you can figure out the distance and that's all. Okay, so let me come back to slide number two over here. Okay, so you can see that um, for the for the timer, you can configure it to work as output comparable. Output comparable means you can use the timer to generate pulses of the width that you want and at the frequency that you want. Okay, and you can also configure uh, the timer to um, uh, to Major to accept uh, to act as an input, okay, to capture um, the signal from outside and measure the pulse width of the, the receiving signal, okay. So in that case, you can see that you can configure the timer to generate output, or you can configure conf uh, configure the timer to be as an input device to capture the the signal from outside and measure the width for that one, right? And you can also use uh, timer as the uh, in uh, pulse width modulation uh, in the in the pulse width modulation generation uh, uh, um, uh, style. Okay, and this is a very important. So for some of you um, who use it, uh, uh, who control uh, robots, for example, right? So you can uh, you can generate pulses with different um, duty cycle. To uh, you know, to control the speed of, of the motor, for example, right? So uh, I think that maybe when you, uh, if you want to learn the uh, more about embedded system, for example, EE one thirty A, for example, I think that in that class, um, uh, uh, it teaches you, uh, it teaches you um, uh, how to control the motor, for example, and you you probably will go back to uh, to this concept again, uh, PWM mode. Uh, pulse width modulation mode. Basically, you just vary the pulse width to control the speed of the motor. Okay, so you can see just a few applications, and you you or uh, you can see that the timer is uh, uh, is uh, is very useful, extremely useful, useful uh, uh, peripheral device. Okay, um, so we should learn it. Okay, um, okay. So uh, now I already did, uh, I just intru uh, introduced you about the sensor over here. So now we go deeper. How to use um, your your timer coming? Uh, um, it is a built-in device, right? Uh, with a uh, with a microcontroller. How to use your microcontroller with a timer to control, uh, to generate, or to receive these post uh, these uh, pulses? Okay. So let me move to uh, slide number four, right? For just to um, give you the top level of the connection, right? Uh, this is your ball over here. This is a, your um, your microcontroller over here. Okay, so actually this is just a, a small piece of your uh, microcontroller. So in that microcontroller, you have you have the processor core, right? You have memory and 
you also have timer, built-in timer over here. Okay? So actually, this box uh, shows only the timer, <laughs> the timers, not other stuff, not the processor core and other things, right? Um, but you can imagine this is the, the microcontroller side, okay? And this is the sensor side that I just talked about, right? So how to hook the, uh, the, uh, the microcontroller to the sensor, okay? So as I said, you only need to control two pins, okay? Uh, for the sensor to send out the ultrasound to measure the distance, you just send uh, uh, 10 microsecond pulses, okay, to the trigger pin. And you can use the, for example, you can use the, the pin number 11 of port B, right? Because of one of the timer connect to that pin. So you can use that one to generate 10 microsecond uh, pulses, okay? Uh, and hook to the trigger pin of the sensor, okay? At the same time, as I said, to know the distance from the door, from the sensor to the object, then you have to measure the pulse width, right? Measure the pulse width of the of the signal, of the, of the equal signal, the, the signal that uh, uh, the um, reflects back to uh, um, back to the uh, the timer over here. So you have to to use um, to use another timer and configure that timer. Uh, uh, as an input, right? Input uh, device, input measuring device, and that the other timer is actually timer four. Uh, is uh, connected to uh, pin number six of port B. Okay, so you can see you can use only two pins, right? With the with the time with the building timer over here, and you can control the sensor uh, to do to measure the distance. Wonderful. So maybe if you have, uh, um, okay, if you really want to. Uh, go out there and buy the, the sensor and maybe buy the uh, some uh, 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 microcontroller with the timer, right? And you can hook up just two pin over here, right? And of course, you have to write some software, of course, of course, right? The software, uh, you need to write something to control the pulse width, for example, right? To control the, um, the frequency and then also write the software how to measure uh, the pulse width as well, right? So, that's what we will talk about uh, for the lecture today and uh, the lecture on Wednesday, okay? Um, so let me see. So we will talk about deeply about the time, so don't worry too much uh, for, if you don't understand these uh, things, ARR, CCR, and PSC, don't worry, because we will uh, we will mention about uh, these uh, register very, very soon, okay? So but for a timer, I think that the most three important uh, ones are, the uh, PSC, okay? So pay attention to this one. PSC, ARR, and CCR. Okay, that's, uh, I really require you to know about this thing for you to uh, to do um, uh, the problem in the exam, okay? So uh, just, um, um, just understand the PSC, ARR, and CCR for me, okay? Pay attention to this one. When, I, when I've mentioned about this thing, uh, practice with me uh, for this concept to uh, to sing it, okay? Um, okay, so let me see. Let me stop a little bit to answer a few questions over here, and I, I'll come back to the lecture, okay? Um, so, Eco pin provides a double check. Oh, no, no, not a double check. Why? No, this is a different, uh, a different William. This is the post you send out, right? You send it to the trigger, okay? For, for for this one, for the sensor to generate the uh, ultrasound, okay? And that ultrasound will, will go out and hit an object and then reflect back, right? And, re and it will be received by the sensor through this one. And the sensor will generate, the sensor will generate a pulse, right? And the pulse, pulse width of that pulse will, is proportional to the distance, okay? Right, so you can see it's not a double check at all. If you want to uh, the sensor to generate something, you have to provide the pulse to the trigger pins, and 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 the equal pulse is actually the pulse that the sensor generate to tell you uh, what the distance is. Okay, uh, based on the pulse width over here, right? So so your your sense your timer needs to measure the pulse width to calculate the distance. Okay. 
So let me see. Like that. So oh, that's that's correct. That's correct, right? <laughs> and the sensors are in in the bed. Okay, in the bed. The bed has both. The bed uh, has the uh, one timer to send out the the, the solar, and also use it. I don't know how many timer is there, but the bed can use a timer, internal timer, to measure uh, the pulse width of um, uh, of the receiving signal. Okay, so Matthew could. You use uh, a yeah yeah you can use that one too yeah um, actually the timer is very useful to use uh, to to use um, to use as a clock to sample the analog signal okay to, to convert the analog signal to the digital signal for uh, um, for you to process internally okay so uh, we use we use the, uh, the timer all the time. For the uh, you know, for the uh, DAC purposes, okay. So um, so let's move to okay. So as I said, pay attention to these three guys, okay. So let's move to the next one, okay. So what is what is inside the timer, okay? So you can see you can see a, a little bit already, right? So one of the timer you can see that it has these component and also a clock source, okay. So let, let, let go down a, a little bit deeper in here, for example. Okay, this is a, a part of the timer, okay? Part of the timer. So you may ask, how can we, uh, how, can, how can the uh, a timer uh, be able to measure or to generate post and, and measure the time? It's actually, you know what? Because inside the timer, the main component of the timer is a counter. That's all. Okay? Of course, there are a bunch of other registers around, right? Try to configure uh, how the timer works, right? But the main, the core component of the timer is the counter. That's all, right? That because it can count, it can count uh, millisecond or, or second or something. That's why it can make, it can generate the precise uh, pulse width or it can measure the pulse width of the receiving signal, right? So internally, it is a counter, it's a 16-bit counter, okay? So uh, for 16-bit counter, and uh, for every clock cycle, every rising edge of the clock cycle over here, the timer will advance by one, okay? So let me let me ask you, practice with me now, okay? Now is the time for you to practice, okay? Uh, for 16-bit, Counter. Assume that it will count up from zero. Okay. So, uh, uh, what is the maximum number it, it can achieve? Can you tell me? Sixteen bit. It it will count from zero to what? Uh, William said fifteen. Uh, Matthew said E. What is E? Uh, I don't understand, Matthew. What What do you mean by E? Question mark. I don't understand. Okay, Kevin. Yeah, but but wow, that's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm. I'm, I'm waiting. For. Uh, Shan actually answered correctly, right? So it can count two to the sixteen. Uh, Mainly, mainly it, 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 it can count to from from zero, right? To two to the sixteen minus one. Is that right? Is that right, everybody? Right. So two to the sixteen is what about sixty five thousand something? Okay. So you can see. So so let's say if the frequency, uh, if the period, okay, if the period of the counter clock over here. This is the counter clock over here. If the period of the counter clock is one second, is one second. Uh, how long will will the counter? How long is it take for the counter to to go from zero to uh, to to the maximum value? Anybody can, can tell me. I can uh, let me bring up the calculator too. So it can count. Uh, 65,000 something second, right? So let me see. Two, uh, 
this is standard calculator. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing up the calculator with me now. So scientific over here. So two, two to the 16 equal to that. 65,536 seconds. So divided by 3,600 seconds for an hour. Wow. So it can count, uh, it can run for uh, about 18 hours and then come back to zero again. Okay. You understand? Understand everybody? That's good. Okay. So that's the, that's the frequency over here. Okay. But the frequency to clock the counter is not really, oh, I mean, I'm see, I'm, I mean, the clock that directly uh, run the, uh, the time of counter is, uh, is derived, is derived from another clock, another clock over here. This clock I call the source clock, okay? The source clock, uh, F clock, PSC, meaning the clock before the PSC block, okay? So PSC means prescaler. It's like, it's like a frequency divided block, okay? It, it's just simple as that, okay? So how, how to, uh, okay, so let me tell, uh, let me tell you, uh, uh, let me tell you how it works, okay? So see that the frequency of this one is slower than the frequency for this one, right? Do you see that, right? So before uh, clocking the timer over here, you can slow down. You can use this, the PSC block, to slow down the frequency of the, the source clock uh, to, to here, right? To generate the counter clock before uh, clocking the timer over here. And the relationship between the frequency for this clock and frequency for this clock is this formula. Very simple, right? So you can see that the uh, this is a divide clock, right? For example, if the prescaler, if prescaler PSC is nine, okay? If the PSC is nine, for example, then this clock will be 10 times slower than this clock. Is that easy? Is that easy, everybody? If the PSC is nine, nine plus one is 10, right? So you will see that this, the frequency of this clock is about 10 times less compared to that of this clock. Okay, understand, easy? Practice together. Could the, could the prescaler, right? Uh, okay, so, uh, okay, so let, let me, uh, let me uh, ask a few more questions with you. Uh, 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 let me ask you a few more questions, okay, uh, to practice. So if my clock over here, okay, if my clock over here, I use the saw clock of 16 megahertz, okay, my clock is, the clock over here, the, the, the saw clock is uh, saw clock uh, is 16 megahertz, okay, okay. And the prescaler PSC equal to 999, okay? Then my question to you, what is the frequency the clock, not the clock, the counter directly? What is the frequency of this guy? This one. Come on, come on, quickly. <laughs> Well, what's the question again? You're too slow. You, you will lose time in the final exam, okay? Yeah. The clock over here is 16 megahertz. And if the prescaler is 999, okay? What is the frequency of the clock? Uh, of the uh, frequency of the clock that, that clocks the timer directly? And the prescaler uh, 16, 16, 16 hertz. Okay. Long, yeah. uh, long set 16 hertz? And Adam, 16 kilohertz. Wonderful. That is the correct answer. 16 kilohertz, right? 16 uh, megahertz divided by 1,000. So that's a 16 kilohertz. Is that right? Anybody? Let yeah. me wait. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, Twin, yes. Uh, he answered yes. Wonderful. Kevin, yes, yes. What? Yeah. Everybody uh, understand. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Right, right. Okay. So, so with that, right? Okay, so let me ask you again. Let me ask you again. So the clock over here continue to be 
16 megahertz in this example, for example. Oh, let me see. Let me let me let me look at William question before I go. Okay. Could the F clock counter be greater than? Oh no no no. Uh, uh, no William. Uh, PSC is uh, is uh, an integer. Okay. Uh, uh, greater than uh, greater than one. Okay. One or greater than that. Because it's I not a fraction. Think but that's a, that's example. a very good question actually, right? If you want but to in reality, when you uh, when you write the software to to set the PSC, uh, you don't set it's a, 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 a fraction, okay? Okay, because the purpose is uh, divided, right? So you can set if either it's nine, uh, thirty nine, whatever you want, right? But but not negative and and not fraction. Okay, so let's do one more example, right? Back to uh, back to the sixteen counter over here. So this one is still this one is still. Uh, um, okay, maybe maybe that's good enough. I, I will have a, a lot more chance to to test you. So don't worry uh, for the subsequent slide. Okay, to save time, let me move in now. Let me move on. So let me see. Uh, Matthew has a question. What's the difference between the frequency of clock uh, PSC and clock PSC? Where is that? Oh, I see. I see. Oh, there's a uh, there's a, a typo. Sorry about it. Uh, I fixed already, and you know what? I fixed uh, long ago. Uh, I mean, previously, this one is CL, and this one is CL. I just fixed to CK and CK, CK here, but I forgot to fix for, to to change this one. Sorry, sorry about it. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I will do that uh, after the le lecture, right? So change this one is CK, okay? CK, okay. Um, let's move to the over here, okay? Okay, so, um, so as I said before, this is 16 bit counter, and I assume that it will run from 0 to 65,300, whatever, right? 65,535, uh, 65, right? Uh, but actually, you can control. The best thing is for, for a timer, you can, you can have a lot of knobs to control the timer the way you want. Wonderful, right? For example, right? For example, you can configure it to uh, uh, to be a counting up uh, timer or you can configure it to to be a counting down counter or you can do you can you can set such that it will count up hit the maximum and down and hit zero and then up and down like that so so this is called up counting this is called a down counting and this is this is called center align counting so you um, you can uh, inside the the register timer uh, um, CR right timer uh, CR register uh, there is uh, there are I think a few bits I think two or three bits for you to control the direction for you uh, I think that the bit is called the bit field is called direction field okay so if you if you look up at the menu you will see that so if you set I remember is if you set zero zero or something it will it will count up right zero one it will count down something like that it's um I, I really have to look at it because i forget uh, what the setting is okay but the, the the message is you can control the counter for it to generate this one easily right cutting up cutting down or center uh, even more than that okay even more than that even better than that uh so let me come back to this one you have a 16 bit right so you assume that it will for example if we can free, figure it to, uh, to to count up and you may assume that it will count from zero to 65,534 right however even better if you can if you can uh, i mean even better you can configure the counter to count from zero and then get to 10 and then come back to zero and then count up again so zero one two three four five six seven ten and it dropped back to zero and then count from zero to 10 again. So you can do that as well. Very flexible, okay? So how to do that, right? If you don't do anything, probably it will count up to 65,534, okay? But if you just want it to go from zero to 10 and then come back to zero, how, how can you do that? Please let me know. How can you do that? Okay? Let me give you a hint. You can set that number in the ARR 
registered. Wonderful. That will, uh, if you set the number in the ARR register, it will just get to that number and come back again. Okay? So even if you have a 16-bit counter, but if you set ARR equal to 10, so it will it will come from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then we will come back to zero again. Understand? Okay, so now, now you uh, up to this point, you understand two things, right? You understand the prescaler, right? And now you also understand the ARR uh, register, okay? That one will de determine, uh, um, determine uh, the, uh, the number that the timer will come back, right? Um, for example, over here, if ARR is 10, it will count up from zero to 10 and come back, right? Right? And if, if ARR is 10, uh, and if you configure the counter to, to count down, then it will count up from 10 down to zero and then come back to, to 10 again and, and just do that. Understand? So now you don't understand two things, right? Uh, PSR and ARR. Wonderful. Okay, so let's move on to, uh, to learn more. Um, oh, by the way, did, did I say, oh yeah, okay. So, okay, so now, now, uh, okay, so so you you understand this part, right? You understand this part, okay? Now, we learn a little bit, uh, uh, so Kevin, Kevin, um, let me answer, uh, yeah, it will count for the cent, if you set ARR to, to be 10, right? Right. So it will count from zero to 10, and then it, it, it will come back from there. So when it hit to 10, it will, it will become nine, and then uh, eight, seven, like that, right? So you can see that, uh, you can see that the period, the period of, of, uh, of this, um, uh, um, of this waveform is actually 20 cycle of the clock cycle okay this is the period of for 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 this waveform is 10 of the clock cycle okay uh, that's a good point that's a good point okay so now let's talk about this uh, okay so the timer uh, we just discussed about this part right the upper part okay you understand the psc you understand the, the timer counter and you understand the ARR value. Okay. Okay. Maybe I, I should talk about this one a little bit uh, over here too. The ISR is, uh, you can use the timer uh, to generate uh, an interrupt too. That's very useful, right? For example, if, I mean, you, you can generate an interrupt uh, for you to chain tags that I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture, right? So, uh, or maybe you can, let me see, um, let me see, you can use an interrupt to do what, uh, to do something useful. Um, uh, or maybe you can, can hook with the, a camera, right? And then after every, every five minutes, you will generate an interrupt, right? And the, you can write the interrupt routine uh, for the, to control the camera for it to take a picture. So with that, every five seconds, it will take a picture for you. Right. So, so remember the timer. You also can configure the timer to generate uh, interrupts at some uh, at the periodic event. Okay. For example, for example, you can configure the timer to generate uh, interrupt when it hit to the to the ARR value over here. Right. Whenever it go to ten, generate an interrupt to do something. Right. So uh, that's one way to to get the interrupt over here. Okay. So now. Now we talk about this guy, the CCR. That's the um, that's basically the last one of the three that I mentioned from the beginning of, of the lecture. Okay, so this is a very uh, very important uh, um, um, very important uh, a register. Okay, so you use this one as you as you know uh, as you will learn very very soon. Okay. Uh, if you configure the timer um, to be an output um, output generator, okay, output generator, then the CCR uh, CCR register is very important to it is you to control the pulse width for you, okay, okay. So how 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 the timer generate the the pulse width uh, with the width that you want, right? 
So the idea is very simple. Okay. So you can you can set the uh, the CCR register um, um, set some number for the CCR uh, uh, over here. Okay. For example, right? For example, the ARR value is ten. For example, right? So the timer will count from zero to ten and come back, right? And if the CCR is uh, is three, for example, right? So if you set the CCR equal to three, then and if you enable the output compare feature over here, so you will see that the, the timer continuously compare the counting value over here with the CCR, right? So when the counter value here is equal to the CCR, it will do something, okay? For example, it will talk to the output, right? Or it will generate the, uh, an interrupt, for example, right? So that's why you will use this comparison to control the pulse width of the output. Okay, so the CCR is, com just remember, it is compare and capture, register, CCR. That's it, okay? So understand the, the CCR uh, concept now. We will, uh, we will practice a lot more uh, on the, on, uh, on, in using these three guys. Okay, so don't worry. Um, as we proceed, we will uh, practice more on that. So let's let move to uh, slide number eight to see if we can, we start to, to do that. Okay, maybe one more. Let me see. A hey, over here. Okay, okay. So one more slide, and we will get to uh, get to the slide that you can uh, can learn how to control the post uh, using the CCR. Okay. So if you um, if you configure the timer as the output generator, okay. So uh, in that case, you will have eight different modes that you can control. Uh, can control the output over here. Okay, so you can see eight uh, eight different modes over here, right? And and the, the mode you set here is controlled by uh, the uh, the OCM bits, and the OCM bits are are in the CCMR uh, uh, capture and control uh, mode register something CCMR register. Okay. So if you set that one, you can control the mode of the output. Okay. For example, if you set this bit or uh, uh, to be zero 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 zero, then you will uh, you will freeze the output of uh, of the timer. Okay. The the output of the timer is the OC rep. Okay. OC rep. Uh, you can throw, so it will not talk or anything. Okay. If you if you configure it's uh, it is is one. Uh, I mean, if you configure to be it's a one one, for example, right? Then whenever the counter value equal to the CCR value, your output will toggle. Okay. If it's a one before, it will toggle to zero, and if, if zero, it will toggle to one. Okay. So and you, if you configure uh, the OCM bits to be zero one zero zero, then you will force the output OC rep of the timer to be zero, completely zero, if you want to. Okay. Or you can force it hard using this combination. Okay. However, um, I don't talk about uh, these uh, settings too much. Let me focus on the last two only. Okay. So um, the last two, if you set the uh, the OCM bit to be zero one one zero, uh, you are um, setting the timer to be in the PWM mode one. Okay. Okay. And if these bits are these bits are zero one one one. Okay, the timer will be in the PWM mode two. Okay, only two modes that, that I, I I want you to pay attention to. Okay, okay, PWM mode one and PWM mode two. So what are the differences between the mode? Okay, so don't worry. Let move to chap, uh, slide number nine and you will see the difference. Okay. Let me go to here. Okay. Okay. So, wow. So, in this slide, you have, let me see, you have everything, right? So, you have uh, ARR, you have a CCR. Oh, actually, it doesn't have a, uh, it doesn't have a PSC over here, but that's okay. Um, okay. So, now, if you look at over here, you will see the interaction between uh, uh, the mold uh, and then the AARR and CCR. Remember, I assume that 
the clock here, okay, the clock here to be the clock here is actually the the clock the clock the timer counter directly, okay. Probably I have to I have to modify uh, this slide to be clear, okay. So clock here is is basically this clock just to uh, uh, it is the CK counter clock, okay, not this clock, okay. Understand the one that actually run the timer counter directly. So probably after the lecture today, I will modify all slides to um, uh, to specify clearly that the clock here is the CK counter clock. Okay. Okay. So just remember that. Okay. Okay. So back to here. So if you if you set the ARR to be six, right? So your 16-bit counter will not run from zero to 65,534, okay? But it will, it will stop at six and come back at zero, okay? So it will, will, will count zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then zero, one, two, five, three, six, okay? So continue to do that, right? Right? So, of course, that's, if you set the, the if you set the counter as a, a up counting, uh, Configure the cutter as the upcounting cutter, right? And uh, pay attention to this one. Okay, remember uh, we configure the uh, the output mode to be PWM01. What does it mean? It means that if the counter value CNT value, right? If the counter value is smaller than the CCR value, in this case three, we set the CCR value three over here. So if the counter value is smaller than the CCR, then the output will be high. Okay? Then the output will be high. But when when the CCR equals or greater than, I mean, when the CNT, the counter, the counter value is, I mean, uh, equals or greater than the CCR value, then the output will be low. See? Do you see that? When the, the, the counter value hit to three, the output will become zero over here. Okay, so that's how you generate uh, the the poles uh, and send out for, from the timer to control the sensor. For example, okay, you you will create this uh, waveform nicely. Okay, understand? So then, let me ask you: What is the duty cycle? First of all, what is the frequency first? Right, frequency of your your uh, output over here. Can you can you tell tell me what is the frequency? I mean, what is that period? I'm sorry. What is the period? The period will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that right? So the period is if you set the AAR, AAR equal to six. So the period will be one plus AAR because you had to add the, the zero value as well, right? So if you set AR equal to six, so the period will be seven of the clock period over here, right? So assume that. Uh, the clock here, the, the clock period is one second, okay? Then the the period of your signal, your output signal, will be seven seconds, understand? Your period will be seven, uh, uh, so exactly, yes, so uh, seven seconds, right? Okay, so what is, what is the duty cycle? The duty cycle is the disk ratio between the high part and the period, right? So you can see in this case, if you set the uh, if you set CCR equal to three, then the high part is equal uh, equal to one, two, three period, right? So it will be three seconds, right? And the clock cycle and and the your signal uh, period is seven second. So the duty cycle of your output of the timer output over here is three over seven. Okay. Three over a second. So you know how to calculate the duty cycle here, right? Wonderful. The duty cycle is very, uh, very, uh, um, very important when you control the motor, motor, right? So if you want to, the motor to run fast, right? Make the duty cycle large. If you want to reduce the speed of the motor, make the, the duty cycle small. For example, one, one over se seven instead of a uh, five over se seven, for example, right? So uh, something like that. Okay. So now, now, uh, let me test you now. Do it quickly for me, okay? So assume that we are um, 
we are uh, configured the cluster as up counting. Okay, AAR is six. AAR is six. Understand? Okay. Now, if I if I set the CCR to be one, to be one. Okay, <laughs> to be one. Okay. Type very very quickly for me. What is the period of your output signal? Quickly. How many seconds? What is the period of the? Have to be seven, right? Well, it has to be seven. I'm, I'm tricking you. <laughs> the duty cycle doesn't change. I, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the, the period doesn't change, right? It's still seven, right? Okay, now, the next question. What is the duty cycle? Wonderful. That's correct, Kevin. That's one for seven, right? Okay, one more thing. Okay, one more, okay? If I set the AAR to be... Oh, assume, okay, uh, assume that the period, the clock period here is at one second, okay? If I set the ARR to be uh, 19, okay? To be 19, okay? And the CCR to be uh, 5, okay? So tell me quickly, what is the period of your output signal? And also, what is the duty cycle of your output signal? Okay. AAR is 19. CCR is 5. Okay. So, when everybody say the, uh, uh, the period is 20, that's correct. Wonderful. And then Matthew also answered the uh, uh, duty cycle is 0.25. That's correct, right? 1, 4. Duty cycle. Wonderful. You understand very, uh, very well. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, well, hopefully, uh, I wish you will do well on the final exam. Okay, so continue, continue with that. Oh, by, by the way, remember, if you configure um, the counter to go down, it is it is slightly different, okay? I'm talking about going up over here, up counting over here, right? So, but if you start from six over here, from the AAR value, if you go down, right? Remember the difference is equal. Over here, it doesn't have an equal, right? Right? So when you count up, when the counter equal to CCR, the upper will, 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 will be low right away. Okay? But when you come down, then when the, when the counter value equal to the CCR value, the signal is still high. Okay? Only when the counter value is smaller than the CCR, then the output will be low. So that's a slightly different uh, between going up and going down. So be careful with that, okay? That's mode number one. So let's see, let's study about mode number two. Okay, so what is a PWM mode number two? What is the difference? Okay, the difference is just a formula over here, okay? So now, similarly, if you set the AAR equal to six, and if the CC, uh, and also up counting mode, and you set the CCR equal to three, okay? So in mode two, the output signal will be low if the counter value is smaller than the CCR value. For example, if the counter value is zero, the output is still zero. If the counter value is one, output is still zero. If the counter equal to three, output is still zero. But if the counter value equals or greater than the CCR value, then the signal will be high, okay? That's the difference from mode number one, right? No, mode number one is something like this, is that right? All right? And now mode number two is kind of reversed like that, okay? So understand? Right, so the period to calculate the period of the output signal, this is the same. Basically, uh, the period is equal to one plus the AAR, I mean ARR value, and multiply the clock cycle over here. In this case, I assume it's the clock uh, um, uh, cycle is one second, but it can be anything, okay? Depend, depend on you. You, you, you. you can use the PSC, the prescaler, right? To control the period of the clock uh, signal over here, okay? So it can be one second, it can be one millisecond, whatever, whatever you want, okay? But, uh, so you can see it's, it's a very flexible. So, so 
the period is is the same as the uh, PWM01. However, the duty cycle, duty cycle is be careful, is a little bit different. Okay, the duty cycle, the high part is is here, right? So if you use you set the mode uh, as mode two, and if the CCR is equal to three, then the duty cycle you have to use this formula, okay? Right? Because you know that for mode one, it is this, right? It is a CCR over AAR plus one. So now for mode two, this is the high part. The high part is here actually. So that's why the duty cycle is equal to the one, the whole thing, right? Subtract, subtract the low part over here. So, and the low part, you know, the low part in this case is, is this fraction over here, right? So the duty cycle for mode two is one minus CCR over AR plus one. So in this case, four over six, uh, seven, okay? Uh, okay, so let me uh, try to answer the William question over here. So, so mode one is up cow and mode two is, oh, no, 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 no. That's a different thing. Mode one and mode two, the different is when the output signal is on, okay? For mode one, the signal will be high if the counter is lower than the CCR, okay? For mode two, the, the output signal is high if the counter is higher than the counter value. You look at over here, uh, uh, William, over here. See, see the difference? Both of them are cutting up, right? Right? But if you if you if you configure the mode, the mode is here. Actually, you are confusing the mode is here. If I set the mode is zero one one zero, that's mode two. The output will behave different differently from uh, if you set the mode is zero one one one. Okay, understand, William? Yeah, I see it. Okay. So now. Uh, practice uh, uh, more with me. Uh, okay, so mode two, mode two again. Okay, so now uh, I will configure to uh, the counter to count up. AAR equal to six, CCR equal to five. Right? What is the period? Quickly, period seven multiply the clock cycle. Right? No problem. Right? What is the duty cycle? Okay, duty cycle over here. You can use right away CCR. Uh, CCI equal to um, to five five divided by the denominator is seven, right? So five over seven, seven, and then one subtract to that, you will get two over here. So two over seven over here. You have to do, remember. Don't make mistake, okay? Because there will be no partial credit at all. You just fill in the box, and canvas will gray automatically. So be careful, okay? Uh, I will not come back and, and, and break it manually, okay? So practice this one for me. Okay, so now, if you use mode two, but if you configure um, the counter as counting down, so it is a little bit different, okay? So when you go, go down, right? Um, when you go down, for example, in this case, maybe you look at over here, over here, that's a very easy to see, okay? So, mode two over here, right? So when, if you set CCR equal to three, right? So when it get to three, the output becomes zero right away, okay? But when you go up, uh, I mean, when, when, uh, when you call up over here, so the output will be high, when the counter is just equal to CCR, understand? But when you go down, when the counter equal to CCR, the output will be low. So that's a very slight um, uh, different uh, between going up and going down, right? If you if you uh, if the mode is uh, mode two, for example, right? Understand? So it is a very the concept is very easy, but but. Don't make mistake, okay? So practice, uh, practice again and again, okay? So in this case, I will really talk about the uh, mode two, and let let let's talk about the uh, center um, uh, center cutting mode, right? So a center alignment of here. So we will go go to six, and then we go down down like this, okay? Okay. So now, 
if you configure the counter as a center alike mode and AAR is six and CCR equal to three, then the output signal is actually like this. You can see the uh, the period gapple is longer than than if you 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 uh, if you configure as a up counting or or down counting only. Right? Okay, so center alike counting is that you will generate a um, a signal with the double uh, uh, double period. Okay, so in this case, if you set AAR equal to six, you can see that the period of, of your output signal over here is actually two times time ARR, time clock period, okay? Remember that we don't have the, the, the ARR plus one anymore, okay? Just ARR, don't make mistake over here, okay? Okay, so let me test you right away. Let me test you right away, okay? So if I set the cut to center align mode, and, and um, if AAR equal to uh, uh, 19, if AR equal to 19, okay? AR equal to 19. What is the clock period of your output signal? Please, quickly, quickly. Quickly. Assume AR equals 19, 1, 9. So what is the, the period of your... Uh, of course, and the clock period is of one second as before, right? So what is your, the, the, the period of your signal? Uh, let me see. Is there any response back here? 38, wonderful. 38 second. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. And what is the duty cycle? Remember to use this formula for me, okay? It will be CCR over ARR, in this case, 3 over 6. And then one subtract for that. So you will see the one, two over here. Okay. 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 So please practice again and again for, for this slide. So, um, of course, I would ask you to, uh, for a few more minutes, but I think that, uh, maybe you could, we can, we can stop right here. That's okay too. Uh, no problem because, uh, we have another, uh, 11 slides. Uh, I think that we can, we have enough time, uh, to finish them, uh, on Wednesday. So definitely I will prepare the computer to be sure <laughs> so we don't lose 10 minutes uh, again. So we will finish the lecture on Wednesday. Okay, is there any other uh, last questions? I'm happy that you seem to be uh, understand. Uh, I mean, you, you seem to understand everything uh, I said today. That's really great. That's really great. That's very good. Okay, so why is it called up counting and down counting? Well, up counting means counting, counting from zero up to the ARR value, right? And drop down immediately. From six, it will, will start from zero again. Okay, understand? And count, counting down means starting from six and go down for the six, five, five. When it hit to zero, the counter value will change immediately to six and then count down again okay so another question how how do you set the count uh, alignment oh the same bit you use the same bit to uh you use the same bit to do that okay let me come back to here remember remember the uh, the direction that's called direction bit in the in the you know, timer cr register okay so you can um you can set the bit to choose what style okay understand william Work given. Mark, someone yeah. asked earlier about the benefits of using one mode over another. Okay, maybe we can talk about that uh, on Wednesday then. Is that okay, Mark? Okay. On Wednesday, we, we will mention a little bit about that, so don't worry about it. Okay, so, uh, so we are given two bits for that then. Uh, yeah, as I don't remember, but uh, let me check. Okay, but either it's only two or three bits, right? So sometimes, because the, the register have more bits than, than usual, so uh, yeah, either two or three, but, but the bit isn't there. I remember the name of the field is direction, B-I-R, right? So you just look at the manual and, 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 and uh, look it up for me, okay? Only two or three bits there, okay? In the, in the T-I-M-C-R register, okay? Any other question? 
Okay, so, so uh, if not, uh, thank you so much for your attention.